I want to read to you tonight from the prophecy of Isaiah, and we are reading from chapter 35. Isaiah chapter 35 for uh, some little time together with you this evening. Isaiah 35 and verse 1. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given unto it, the excellency of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our God. Strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as an heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out, and streams in the desert. And the parched land shall become a pool, and the thirsty land springs of water. In the habitation of dragons where each lay shall be grass with reeds and rushes, and an highway shall be there and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those the wayfaring men, no fools shall not err therein, no lion shall be there nor any ravenous beast shall go up thereon. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. And I trust that the Lord will write his word into all our hearts with real blessing and real challenge and ministry tonight. In the days of Queen Victoria, before electrification of the railway tracks, there was a new rail line that ran all the way from central London to the famous building known as the Crystal Palace. And it was referred to as the high-level route to the palace, the high-level route to the palace. And so tonight I want to speak to you and spiritualize that very thought tonight into your heart and into my heart and mine tonight to speak to you about the high-level line to the crystal palace, to the glorious palace above. What a wonderful chapter this is. If we had taken time to read chapter 34, we would have found ourselves in a parched land, in a kind of a wilderness dryness. But when we come to chapter 35, we move from the wilderness into the garden into the place of verdancy, into the place of abundance, into the place of life, into the place of vibrancy, and everything very wonderful about chapter 35 that we have just read is right there written into the Scriptures before us. What it does give primarily is a wonderful view of Messiah's reign. Isaiah was called and is known as the evangelical prophet though he lived 700 years before the birth of Jesus Christ. And so to him was given a tremendous revelation of what would prevail under the, up, under the ministry and sovereignty of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Isaiah 35, whilst it also speaks with some relation to Babylonian exiles returning from their captivity back to their homeland, there is a spiritual message and spiritual parallels in Isaiah 35 that thinking just about exiles coming from captivity would never do this passage justice. We do have to see it in the context of the ministry of our wonderful Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And in those verses that we read together, it covers so many aspects of human emotion and human condition and feeling. Say to the fearful hearts, be strong 
Aren't we living in a day when there are many fearful hearts, even amongst God's people? And my message to you tonight is, fear not, be strong, because Jesus is alive. He's on the throne tonight. God is in control of all things, amen? And he will not let go the reins, not ever, ever. He still ascended and still seated at God's right hand is our great Savior tonight. He sees all things. And what we are seeing is the underside which looks so disjointed and so frazzled, but he sees it from the top side, and God is working out his amazing plan that was planned in eternity. And what we are seeing, if we have eyes to see it, is God preparing the ground for the glorious reign of his glorious Son, when the kingdoms of this world shall become the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. That makes me feel like saying, Hallelujah. Amen. And thank God tonight, it goes on from that to say, Strengthen the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. And you know these meetings that we've been sharing when Pastor Birdie called me, he said, Eric, I want you to come and I want you to give us a, a week of ministry meetings to speak to God's people. And I feel when I'm doing that, I'm in clover. I love preaching the everlasting gospel of Jesus Christ to a crowd of men and women who are not saved. I got tremendous thrill in preaching that message. And if you follow us and glad tidings are, you're going to get the opportunity during the month as we preview. Nobody else much knows about this, but you're going to get the opportunity of seeing the great drive-in services in Port Rush during the years that they were on, during the month of July. And you will find me there preaching directly to men and women, strangers to the grace of God. But in my ministry, there is also a tremendous thrill and joy of preaching the message of a victorious Christian life, of a fullness in Jesus that is so much the need of the hour in the church of today. And there are so many who have feeble hands and weak knees. And the Lord says, I want you to come alongside those who are having inadequacy to cope with the circumstances of life and who need an overcoming life. And my ministry these evenings is toward that aspect. But I couldn't leave out what I saw in the passage where we read these words in those wonderful verses. When the Lord's ministry is in its full flow, then the eyes of the blind shall be opened. Then the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as an heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out, and streams in the desert. My dear people, doesn't that resonate with the life and ministry of Jesus Christ? Don't we see that played out in three and a half years of wonderful ministry, when blind people were made to see, lame people were made to walk, Deaf people were made to hear. Why? Because he is the eternal Son of God and God the Son. And one touch of his mighty hand does this even today. He is the healer of broken hearts. He is the maker of light to the blind. He gives life to the dead. He gives leap to those who are lame. What a transformation grace works in those who are strangers to God and dead and blind and deaf and dark. But it doesn't end there. It really opens up the whole picture to something on a far grander scale. You know, I've seen many rivers in life and stood by them and walked by them and seen different waterfalls in life. In fact, we just a little walk up there in the university gardens the other day, Yvonne and myself, just for a little, little stroll, and we saw a waterfall. But a few years ago, we happened to be up in Canada, and we were out there and we were taken over to the Niagara Falls. Well, I tell you, I saw, I saw a waterfall on a grand scale. I really saw something that was quite unique. 
A few years earlier, we were in Brazil, and we went right down to the borderlands between Paraguay and Argentina and Brazil, where all those countries meet together, and there you will find falls that even put the Niagara into the shadows, the Iguazu Falls. What an amazing water flow. I want to tell you that in grace tonight, we're living where the Niagara and the Iguazu combine together so that rivers is thy promise. Rivers is our plea. Less than this can never meet our cry for thee. Oh, tired of lukewarm service and the loss it brings, we would live entirely for eternal things. And so the Holy Spirit takes this and opens it right up and we begin to see springs of water Habitations where dragons were are cleaned out and reeds and rushes are swept aside and what comes cutting through the whole thing? A glorious highway. A glorious highway. A highway shall be there and a way and it shall be called the way of holiness. Oh, I like that. The high level route to the palace on high. And the Lord Jesus tonight has come amongst us again to meet with us, not because we're a big crowd, but because we are an important crowd. He has come amongst us tonight, not because we are a congregation of people just, but because we are individuals who are valuable to him. And when he gave his life on Calvary's cross, and poured out his precious blood. It was for people who would come to him one by one by one by one. And God, through the Holy Spirit, deals with people one by one by one. And so I never get disheartened whether there's a small crowd, and I don't get over elated when there's a large crowd, because it seems as if we're speaking to one. You know that's what Yvonne and I are doing all the time. Every week on Glad Tidings are. We speak to many, many people. And so we know that out there, there are thousands of people over the months that have gone that are hearing us and seeing us. But when we're speaking, we are speaking as one to one. Because somewhere out there, in some part of the world, there's one man, there's one woman, and we have a message for them. And it's sometimes the message of the simple, glorious gospel of Jesus, and quite often, because I feel that is a significant part of our ministry, it's a message to the church of Jesus Christ, to the people of God. Now let me just get right into the message that I have for you tonight, taken out of this wonderful little passage in this precious verse. The highway. Well, what is there about the highway? Here's the first thing. The highway is a way of purity. It's a way of purity. You know, my friends, when I go to the dentist, I haven't been for a while because we don't we get called now. I used to send a little letter every six months say, need to come get your teeth looked at. Well, I've been chewing for the last couple of years and I haven't had a letter. But when I like to go there, I like to think that he is, I like to think he has sterilized the instruments that he's going to put in my mouth. A year and a half ago, I went down to Dublin for a hip operation. I like to think that when I went into the theater there, that the surgeon had sterilized the butcher knife and the hacksaw and the cross cut that he was going to use to operate on me. We look for cleanness in those areas of life. When I sit down to take my dinner off a plate, I like to think the plate's clean and washed. Don't like to see egg yolk from the breakfast on the plate when I get my dinner. You know, we like cleanness. God likes cleanness. He does. He does. And so right through the scriptures, this theme of purity is very important. And you know, there's so much I could say about it. Let me give it to you very quickly. It's a purity that is possible. It is possible. God would never command something that was impossible. He says to us, be ye holy. 
for I am holy. He would never command us to be holy if it was not possible to be holy. Not just imputed holiness, counted holiness because of Jesus' holiness, but imparted holiness. That it also is implanted within us. There is imputed holiness in the Scriptures because we have no righteousness of our own and we are imputed as righteous in Christ's righteousness. But there is more. There is imparted righteousness. For as by one man sin entered into the world, so by another man many shall be, as by one man many were made sinners. And how sinner are we? Actually and actively, but inwardly, so by that same man many are made righteous. And what is righteousness? Rightness. Rightness. I want a heart. It's in right, out right, upright, down right, all right. Amen. A purity that is possible, a purity that is personal, personal. Each one of us, whenever David bowed his knee in the presence of God, he said, O Lord, for thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. But he didn't stop there. He went on, and then he said, O oh Lord, create in me a clean heart. Create in me a clean heart. And you know something? God is a creator. He said, let there be light, light. Let there be day and night, day and night. Let there be animals, animals. And when God speaks the word of creation, it doesn't take a thousand years between every speak. It's not 7,000 years in Genesis 1. It's six days of creative power. When he speaks, it's done. And my dear people, with all the solemnity of the moment, I tell you, when Jesus speaks, cleanness, he makes clean in a moment. He can cleanse into the inmost being. And David said, Create, do something like creation's dawn in my heart. Speak cleanness to my heart. And what did he pray? Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew or make new in me a right spirit. It's personal. It's possible. It's primary. It's such a prevalent theme right through the Scriptures. Be ye holy as I am holy. Without holiness no man shall see the Lord. And so he has provided for us in this cross work of Jesus a holiness that is primary, that is possible, that is personal, that is practical because it says, Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? He that hath clean hands. There's the practical dimension. Are my hands clean? <laughs> That's what the young man prayed in Lewis when Mr. Campbell was there and the revival came. And he was praying in the prayer meeting. And in a moment he said, Lord, I don't know about these other men in this prayer room tonight. But he says, Oh God, as I know my own heart, are my hands clean? Is my heart pure? And the Spirit of God came upon the prayer meeting and revival came to the community. Clean hands. Have you got clean hands in business? <laughs> I know some people, they don't have clean hands in business. <laughs> They've been investing their money in some shares and some things that are very unethical. But they say, yeah, I'm saved all right. But, you know, make money because that's, what, that's the way the thing's going, you know. <laughs> oh, yes, my dear friends. The Lord sees and he keeps a record. And we need to know where our investments are. Are they, are they propping up the, the alcohol trade? Are they propping up some other kind of system that's very ungodly and driving people down to a Christless hell? 
Where am I investing my talents, my time, my money, my things, my hands? What do I do with them? Yes, a very, very thoughtful question. And it's a purity that is purposeful. What's the purpose of it? That the man of God might be thoroughly furnished unto every good work. It's a it's a way of purity. The unclean shall not pass over it. And you say, oh, Pastor Eric, that's what I would love to have, a pure heart. In thy light, Lord, sometimes in thy pure holiness, I feel as if I am unclean inside. Oh, make me clean. Oh, make me clean. Mine eyes thy holiness have seen. Oh, send that sin-consuming flame and make me clean in Jesus' name. It's a way of purity. It's a way of simplicity. The wayfaring man, though a fool, shall not err therein. Now, that, I am told, is a man with a very limited mental capacity. And I look down at you, you all look pretty good, intelligent people tonight. I'm sure you are. And tonight you have an ability to comprehend. The Bible is speaking here and says, even the man with a limited mental capacity can begin to comprehend the matter of holiness, to walk the highway of holiness. It doesn't exclude those who have a very limited mental capacity. Why? It's telling me it's simple, a simple way. You know something? Sin makes things complicated. Holiness makes things simple. There's nothing more simple in life than being honest. <laughs> but there's nothing more convoluted and difficult in life as being dishonest. Is that right? <laughs> there's nothing difficult about being, having fidelity. But infidelity brings a lot of difficulty, doesn't it? We have seen that. What a carnage has come out of infidelity in marriage. What extensive ravages and, 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 and consternation and all kinds of uh, outcomes from that. But fidelity keeps things simple. <laughs> Very much so. And if we are kept in God's way, I say here, there's nothing complex about the truth of holiness. There's nothing complex about walking in the pathway of holiness. Sin always darkens and distorts life and lives. It was John Fletcher, I referred to him last night, he said, there are two simple principles on which the whole Christian experience revolves. Living faith and loving obedience. Living faith and loving obedience. And if those two wings are spread, we can rise high in grace. In a living faith and a loving obedience, we can rise higher in the grace of God. We can walk on a higher plane than we've been before. So that even as we enter in, we then go on and say, Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land, a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. We had the wonderful privilege, Yvonne and I, of sitting under the ministry of a wonderful godly man. He was known as Stanley Banks. He was the principal of Emmanuel Bible College. My sister went there back in the 1970s, and she then went to be a missionary to the Muslim people of North Africa. But you know, he was such a precious man. He had a lovely smiling countenance. And we used to go to hear him in the Bangor Convention, and the meetings would be filled with people to hear Mr. Banks speak. He spoke quite gently, but he was so sweet and authoritative. And he used to speak about the... Uh, he spoke on so many lovely thoughts. But one of the messages that we remember was to him speaking on this wonderful passage of Scripture. And he called it the Golden Highway. The Golden Highway. And he spoke about the simplicity of a love-dominated life. 
The simplicity of a love-dominated life. Please, Lord, give me a love-dominated life that simply is in love with the Savior with all the heart, all the soul, all the mind, all the strength, and with a love that reaches out to others as Jesus would. The simplicity of the highway of holiness, it's also a way of safety. No lion shall be there. No ravenous beast shall go up thereon. It shall not be found there. I'm glad tonight that the ravenous beasts of greed and anger and covetousness and uh, all kinds of other distempers. I'm glad tonight that the grace of Jesus Christ and the blood of the Savior can deal with those beasts of prey, if we could call them that. Jealousy, worldliness, selfishness, evil thoughts, gossiping, bitterness, anger, unrighteous anger, variances. You know, in the passage, Galatians chapter 5, it lists 17 works of the flesh. <laughs> and in amongst them there are some of the more vile things, but in amongst them there are those that are very prevalent sometimes in the hearts of those who profess to be saved. Kind of bitter things and not nice things and backbiting and we know somewhat about those things in life. There is no place for them, my dear people, in the sanctified heart. No place for them. To be a child of God, have an open countenance, to have a sky blue experience, to seek to be at peace with those who even would not be at peace with us and if they don't want to be reconciled, the responsibility is not on us to keep running after them to make it so. We just have to let people sort themselves under the presence of God. But our responsibility is to be right. In right, out right, upright, down right, all right. Yes, what about that? What about the way whenever the way is made safe? And those things inside that threaten to break cover and spoil our testimony are dealt with so that we are safe from the marauding beasts that would rise up from the depths of our moral being. I'm glad this evening that there is a precious fountain open in the house of David for sin in a singular sense and uncleanness that goes to the heart of the need. And as someone said, the heart of the need is the need of the heart. And the Lord wants to give us hearts that are perfect and right and pure and good. As the hymn says, a copy, Lord of thine. Safe way. It's a way of fellowship because we read here in this lovely passage that the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy. Upon their heads they shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. The redeemed shall walk there. I put a little thing in my note here. The product of Pentecost was the church. A formation of fellowship that walked in harmony of heart with conformity to Christ and loyalty to their Savior and each other. And then it says, where the brethren dwelt together in unity, there the Lord commanded the blessing. Oh, my dear people this day, Yvonne and I have many friends, many, many, many friends, many people who pray for us, Many people right across the, the spectrum of religious activity. We are not bound in to one little denomination. We have people across the board who pray for us, who are blessed through us, and whose love and friendship we love. 
Why? Because they are blood-bought, they are our brothers, and they are our sisters in Jesus Christ. And as we say, here's my hand, here's my heart. Is thy heart right with mine as my heart is with thine? You remember that verse in the Bible? Oh, my dear people tonight, what a blessing to have fellowship. What a fellowship. Whilst we walk in the pilgrim way, what a fellowship. A way of fellowship and finally a way of joy. A way of joy. You know the beautiful outcome of Paul's letter to the church at Ephesus was when he said, Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. And what was the sequel? Speaking to yourself. Sometimes they say when you start talking to yourself, you need to maybe make a visit to a certain individual. When you're talking to yourself, there's something maybe not right. But here's the right way to speak to yourself. In psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your hearts to the Lord. The fullness of the Spirit brings all the music of heaven into our hearts. And the Lord is the master musician, friends. (laughs) He made music. (laughs) And heaven's full of music and song. And I want to get as much of heaven in my heart down here so that when I go up there, I'll not feel a bit strange. Oh, my dear people, that Jesus Christ might give us a life that is harmonized with his nature, harmonized with his will. Whenever there's disharmony on a piano, we go to Peter Jackson, used to come and stay in our home, wonderful man, couldn't see. I can't really play, although I can see, but he could play anything even though he was blind, and he loved coming to our home. And he loved the piano that we inherited from Yvonne's mother. Uh, We got that beautiful piano, and he used to come, and he'd bring his tuning fork with him, and he would tune our piano every time he stayed with us, you know. And he'd get out all his little tuning forks, and one time he was tuning our piano, and this man blind, and he says, there's something behind the piano. And we said, I don't know what could be behind the piano. He said, there is, there's something there. It's vibrating, I can can sense it. And we looked, and there was a sheet of manila behind the piano. And he felt it through the piano when he was tuning it. And then he would start to play, and playing up and down that piano. My friends, when it was harmonized, Peter Jackson loved to play. When he would go to play in some place, he would make sure that the instrument was in tune before he would go to play. He would go early and check it out and tune the piano because harmony was in the very fibers of his being. And harmony is in the very fibers of God's eternal being. And he wants us to be in total harmony with him so that the harmony of holiness rings out from our hearts. It was Shelby Corlett who called it the harmonizing experience. And holiness harmonizes us with a Holy Father, a Holy Son, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Bible, the Holy work of the cross, the Holy way, and a Holy Heaven. Hallelujah. All the way. Oh, my dear people, what a life to have. What a sweetness to possess. Old Bud Robinson, and with this I conclude, he loved the harmonizing experience. And one time he wasn't feeling too well and he went to see the doctor. And the doctor did a few tests on him and he said, oh, bud, he said, uh, uh, there's something not right. He says, too much sugar. Well, hallelujah, said Uncle Bud. That's what I've been praying for. He said, I've been praying for God to make me sweet. He used to say, poke me anywhere and honey will come out. I tell you, poke some people and it wouldn't be honey would come out. <laughs> you think they'd had a feed of, a feed of garlic or something. Poke me anywhere and honey will come out. 
Oh, said Uncle Bud. Oh, doctor, he said, that's what I've been praying. No, he said, Bud, this is bad. This is serious. Lord, he said, I've been praying for sweetness, and now I've been told I'm sweeter. <laughs> oh, friends, tonight, God can make us sweet on the inside. God can give us harmony on the inside so that there is a way of purity, a way of simplicity, a way of safety, a way of, uh, of this lovely fellowship, and uh, a way of safety from the lions that would burst out and jump up those cruel beasts inside. God wants to take out the works of the flesh and so presidents our lives with the fruit of the Spirit. Did you notice, friends, that the flesh is in plural, and the fruit of the Spirit is singular, so that when he comes and takes possession and presidency of our hearts, when we put our lives as a consecrated offering at his feet and say, Lord, send the fire upon my offering and consume whatever needs to be consumed so that what remains will glorify you, Lord. When we do that, and a consecrating life, and a sanctifying God meet together, then we begin to walk the highway of holiness. The golden highway, said Mr. Banks. I called it the highway of holiness. We, there's a beautiful hymn in the making melody, but you maybe don't even know it, but uh, sometime we'll check it out and see. 499 it is, and it was written with this beautiful passage, uh, walking in the king's highway, walking in the king's highway, walking in the king's highway. Jesus says tonight, would you want to walk in the king's highway? Would you want to travel by the high-level route to the palace on high? Would you like to step up this evening and move on up with the Lord and say, yes, Lord, more holiness give me, more likeness within to Jesus my Savior. Here I am, Lord. I open up my heart to you, Lord. Take total possession of my being so that I might be a life all filled with praise to thee, my precious Lord divine. You know, that's a beautiful hymn. Pastor Birdie said to me just before the service, he said, you know, there's a lovely hymn and we sing it here at the Lifeboat. And I thought, I didn't even think that it would be so well known because not many sing it. But we used to sing it as a family. And it's a beautiful hymn. And maybe we'll get a chance to sing it before the end of the week and let you sing it out with all your hearts. Oh, make my life, Lord, like a melody, ever sounding out the message of the cross. Well, my friends, the time is gone, and we don't want to uh, uh, keep you late and prevail on your good nature tonight, but let you think tonight of what the Lord is saying and Touch him by faith and say, yes, Lord, this is what I need. I may not understand it all. I just maybe can't fit all the theological pieces in together in the jigsaw. But, Lord, I, 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 I read my heart, and I see my feeling desire. And in simple faith, Lord, I reach out my hand. I want a clean lily-white, spirit-filled, bubbling life with joy in the Spirit, joy in the Holy Ghost. I say to conclude with genuine, we don't live in the euphoria of the initial experience for the rest of our lives. The life is worked out in the rigors of everyday living. And we hit the rocks and the hard places and we feel the bumps and we have our times of tears and our sorrows and even our times when 
conflicting uh, voices come into our hearts. We don't live in the euphoria, but it's made so that even in the roughest suds of life that we still feel calm, restful, peace. Every joy or trial falleth from above, traced upon our dial by the Son of Love. We may trust Him fully, all for us to do. They who trust Him wholly find Him wholly true, stayed upon Jehovah, even when all around is heaving and going, stayed upon Jehovah. Hearts are fully blessed, finding, as He promised, perfect peace and perfect rest. You know that hymn? You do. Well, that earth sit down, the high-level root, with all the wonderful thought that is in it, but it levels it, earth sit down to the rigors of living, but living in holiness by faith in Jesus in an unholy world and proving him and going through valiantly and victoriously. Now let us pray together. Lord Jesus, tonight we don't want to somehow present something that's pie in the sky and something that's up there airy-fairy, but something, Lord, that hits down on to where the rubber hits the road and gives a perspective to life and living that is deep and tranquil in the soul, even though the waters around may be foaming and raging, and even though all is against us, Lord, still that calm reassurance of an inward calm and rest, and that walk with the Lord in white purity and cleanness of heart and hand. O oh Lord, I pray that this evening we shall be found with our feet shod walking the high way of holiness. O oh Lord, bless the dear people. Thank you for those that we have gotten to know, Lord, more even in recent days and years, Lord, and the fellowships that we have together and the fellowship that we have in Jesus. Oh, Lord, we're headed for a holy heaven. We want to be a holy people. So, yes, Lord, thank you for dying to give us holiness of heart and victory in life. God bless the people, and now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God our Heavenly Father rest upon us in the communion of His Spirit. In Jesus, our Savior's glorious name, amen and amen.